changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark, and I'm talking to you today from the floor of the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in New York City. I'm in a sound booth in the middle of the convention hall watching people walk by, and some of them are listening for a bit as they walk by. And my engineer, Chad, is here with me from Hangar Studios. So normally we do this recording in a little studio in Times Square with nobody watching. So when my manager, Jeff, asked if I wanted to record a few episodes of the podcast from the floor of the NAB convention, I said yes immediately, primarily because that's my new policy, just to say yes to everything before I can think of all of the reasons that I could have said no. And that's what I've been doing these days as I get older. I'm making sure that my life doesn't get stale, that I don't get stuck in a rut doing what's comfortable. So I say yes as much as possible, even when something sounds a little bit scary, because that's how we keep growing as we get older, and that's how we stay part of a changing world, and that's how we make ourselves feel empowered and proud of ourselves for pushing ourselves to do something new. I've actually been exposed to this from all of the Chicken Soup for the Soul stories that I've read from people who make a resolution, who promise themselves that they will deliberately and consciously say yes to new experiences. And then these writers report how that changed them for the better and led to more new things and a broader and more meaningful life for them. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying things that frighten me or things that I just assumed I wouldn't like. So I went rock climbing in a gym, which was kind of fun, although I couldn't move my arms for a week afterwards. I went zip lining in Costa Rica, which was actually not scary at all, as it turned out. I rode every single roller coaster at Universal Studios with Diet Corona, our associate publisher. There was one hour till closing. We just ran from one roller coaster to another without letting ourselves get scared. And we went on every kind of roller coaster that I used to refuse to go on. I even tried avocados again, even though I was sure that I hated them. And it turned out I liked them. So whether it's the little things like new foods or the big things like flying away to a faraway country, we feel empowered when we do something that challenges us. And I talk about that in one of my stories in our new book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Step Outside Your Comfort Zone. And after a message about our other podcast, I will be back to tell you about that experience and how I jumped off a 1,000-foot cliff. The Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast continues straight ahead. Chicken Soup for the Soul celebrates your pets and the power of the human-animal bond. I'm Robin Gansert, CEO of American Humane and host of the new podcast from Chicken Soup for the Soul, Loving Animals. Every week, I'm joined by celebrities and other special guests who share a passion for spreading care, hope, and compassion for the world's unique species. You'll hear inspiring stories of animal rescue and rehab, plus the latest trends in animal welfare. Chicken Soup for the Soul presents Loving Animals with me, Robin Gansert. Available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or anywhere you download your favorite podcast. There's a woman named Pauline Kieser who was quite a scrappy Connecticut politician. And she said this. She said, continuity gives us roots. So think about a tree with roots. That's continuity. But change gives us branches, letting us stretch and grow and reach new heights. And reaching new heights was exactly what I did when I stepped outside my comfort zone last year on a vacation in the Middle East. That's when I found myself standing at the top of a 1,000-foot cliff in Oman, looking down at a beautiful beach resort on the Persian Gulf. So you might be thinking that taking a beach vacation on the Persian Gulf was the step outside your comfort zone experience, but that part was easy because it was gorgeous and luxurious, and the hotel picked us up at the airport in Dubai and got us through customs on the border with Oman. What was difficult was getting to the resort at the end of the trip. So Oman is a really beautiful country. It's on the Arabian Peninsula. It's known for its craggy sandstone mountains that just plummet right down to the sea with these sheer drops. And it's really dramatic to see these tall mountains with these cliffs that plunge right down to the water. 
occasionally with beaches running along the edge of the sea. So to get to this resort, you have three choices. You can arrive by speedboat from Dubai. You can drive down a narrow, winding, third-world, five-kilometer mountain road with hairpin turns and no guardrails. It's really terrifying. Or you can jump off the 1,000-foot cliff that the resort sits under, and you can paraglide down to the beach. And according to TripAdvisor.com, which I consulted, the really cool guests paraglide down to the beach. So I decided that since I was 59 and was facing turning 60, that I still needed to be cool, so I would paraglide down to the beach. And I imagined that the way that I would glide down was some kind of fixed wing thing, like a hang glider. And I thought, well, that makes aerodynamic sense because I would never, ever jump out of an airplane, you know, where you have this piece of fabric that may or may not turn into a parachute filled with air and has a million strings coming out of it that could tangle. But paragliding, fixed wing, I would be swooping down to the beach. Nothing could go wrong. So I signed up myself and my husband for it, get up to the top of this cliff. They're putting the harness on me. I turn around and look behind me. And there's a flimsy piece of fabric lying on the ground with a million strings coming out of it. And all of a sudden, I realize I have made a really, really big mistake. And it was actually kind of startling because I'm somebody who specializes in words and clear language. And I was totally off my game because it hadn't occurred to me that paragliding involved a parachute. But it was too late to stop. And as I realized this, they were putting this helmet on my head, which really didn't make any sense because if I was going to plummet to my death off a 1,000 foot cliff, a helmet was not going to help. And I asked them why I needed the helmet and I don't know what they said, but the words that I heard were to identify the body. So then they told me the worst thing of all. They said that you have to run off the cliff without stopping or the parachute won't fill with air. So you have the flimsy piece of fabric behind you with the one million strings coming out of it, and you are running off a cliff, and you have to have faith that this piece of fabric will fill with air after you have jumped off the cliff. But I did it, and luckily I was harnessed to a big guy, and he started running, so there was nothing I could do. I looked like a cartoon character with my legs in the air in front of him trying to run off the cliff. And miraculously, the parachute filled with air, and we were soaring, we were riding the air currents, we actually got higher than where we had started, and I understood what it's like to be a bird and swoop on the air currents. And we stayed up an extra long time, and the guide was telling me how great this was. We were going to be up for 15 minutes, and half of me thought that was good and that the view was great, and the other half of me was terrified and was saying, what is wind shear? I'm trying to remember what is wind shear, and could that happen, and what happens if the air just suddenly disappears and the parachute has no air in it but we made it and finally we flew lower and lower and then we put our legs out and we ran on the beach and mission was accomplished it was time for a nice tropical drink and I never have to do that again so it was actually a very good experience for me because now I know something about myself I know that if I can run off a cliff in Oman anything is possible So my favorite quote of all time is by John Shedd, and he said, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. And I think that's a great philosophy to live by for all of us. So set sail from your own safe harbor, feel that wind, see new sights, try new things, and make your world bigger by stepping outside your comfort zone. Thanks for listening today. I'm Amy Newmark. If you want to learn more about our Step Outside Your Comfort Zone book, visit our website, chickensoup.com, and click on the podcast button, and you'll see information about the book and a list of tips to help you go outside your comfort zone. Come back for our next episode when I'll be sharing a couple more stories from our new book from two women who had extraordinary experiences as a result of spontaneously saying yes to their own new things.